welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Today we're going to have a complete change of subject. In fact I'm going to go back probably four years and look at a problem that I first looked at on this machine many years ago. And that is something which crops up very very often in my questions and that is the fourth corner problem. Anybody who's tried to set the machine up will understand the basic principle of taking First of all, setting the beam onto roughly the centre of mirror one there. You move mirror two as close as you can to mirror one. And you try and get it roughly lined up on the centre. Roughly, it doesn't matter. Okay, then you move it far, far away. And you try and get the second dot to match up with the first dot. And you adjust this mirror here until you get the second dot matching the first dot. And when you've achieved that, what you've done, you've set the beam parallel to this y-axis rail in both the horizontal and the vertical plane. Move the head across as close as we can to mirror two and repeat the whole exercise again. We fire a beam at here, then we move this away, we run another dot on here and we try and get the second dot on here to match up with the first dot and we adjust this mirror till it does. And we keep playing with this axis once or twice until we get these two dots running perfectly true. That means we then align the x-axis up, both horizontally and vertically. Forget about the z-axis because that's not the problem. The problem is what we've done, we've aligned this corner, this corner and this corner and all the dots line up. But now, when we get to the fourth corner, which is here, the dots don't line up. We can't adjust anything now because it's all adjusted. It's just out of position in the fourth corner. Why? I've heard all sorts of silly explanations. First of all, I've more or less fixed the problem on this machine three years ago, four years ago, when I first fiddled with it. And I fixed it by doing two things. Now you can see my cable chain here, how it's getting quite snug and tight. And so what I did, I finished up loosening the screw on the cable chain as one thing that helped the problem because there was a twisting load that was induced by this chain. The second thing that I did was to put an additional screw in here to support this bracket because it was very, very, mm, should I say, flexible. There was a fixing screw in here to hold this bracket, this motor mount bracket, which was also the mirror mount bracket, against this but it didn't seem to be doing the job properly so I finished up putting an additional screw in myself and that stiffened up and solved the problem more or less. It was not perfect but it was substantially better than it was before. I've lived with it for four years now but as this problem cropped up again I thought I would have a quick look at it again for you but to see you know if I could demonstrate just what I did and why I did it because there is so much uh, what can I say mythology around what you should do to fix this problem and why it's there. I can clearly demonstrate what the problem is. I can clearly demonstrate that the, all the suggestions that are being made to fix this problem will not fix the problem and I can show you where the problem is but I cannot always tell you exactly what the solution is to fix your problem. In addition to this fourth corner problem, which is a perennial problem, um, which I try and answer for specific people, there's another question that's popped up quite a few times in the past few months. People are asking the question, why can't I use the bottom here and point something back up through the system to align the beam? Why do I have to use my red dot pointer, which to be honest, anybody that's followed this series will understand I got up to Mark 7 before I gave up because Mark 7 <laughs> still didn't get me a perfect beam alignment. I couldn't get the axis of the beam that I was firing to match perfectly with the axis of the laser beam. And unless you can do that, it doesn't help you with setting the mirrors up. Now, although when I designed this, I know, I know exactly where the outside diameter of this tube is relative to the base and relative to the mirror and relative to everything else. I know where the nominal center axis of this tube is, but that doesn't mean to say I know where the axis of the laser beam is. 
because the laser beam is inside several pieces of glass which are not necessarily manufactured by machine, they're manufactured by hand and we cannot absolutely guarantee where the axis of the beam will come out of here. And that was my biggest problem. My last and greatest attempt was still a failure. Well, it's not a failure. None of them have been failures. They've all been 95%, but they've not been good enough to perfectly set the machine without the need for this scorch test. Okay, very frustrating, but here we've got the very, very latest and greatest version that I tried to include in my system. That's got a little red dot pointer integrated in there, which pulls down, hopefully, to absolutely true to the vertical axis of the, the tube and true to the central axis of the tube. I couldn't get it any better. Okay, so it's only made of perspex, but still, it's pretty damn good, to be honest, in terms of engineering. Even so, I could not get that to work perfectly. And that's going in the forward direction to set the beam. So although that's a failure as far as a beam alignment system is concerned, it gets, it gets the mirrors roughly there, but you still have to go around and carry out the scorch test. So what's the point of doing that? You know, <laughs> there is no point. You might as well start off with the scorch test and do the job once. Now, I'm not actually gonna move the red dot pointer at the moment. It isn't truly on the center. It doesn't matter where it is. What we're doing, we're looking at the, if you like, there's a little bright halo mark just above the brown scorch mark. So remember what that looks like, okay? Because what we're going to do, we're going to gradually move this backwards now. Now, look what's happened. We've moved it backwards and the beam has gone right down to the bottom here. And out the bottom. Okay, so something strange has happened. And what is that something strange? I've heard people say that the cause of this problem is because you haven't got your machine leveled up properly. I'm sorry, I'm going to prove absolutely that it makes not one jot of difference how well your machine is leveled up. Look, I'm going to do this. See this? See, I'm lifting it up, what, half an inch? I've put all the diagonal load over in that corner there. So this whole machine is now stressed. No, it's not, because it's a very stiff machine. We've got a whole structure in here which is designed to keep these rails parallel. No matter how rubbish this machine is and cheap it is, the one thing they do is they jig manufacture a basically flat frame as the basis of this machine. And all machines, they're all designed exactly the same way. Now, you may not believe me, but from an engineering point of view, it really doesn't matter if these rails are very slightly cantered to each other like this. It does matter if they're like this, but not necessarily if they're running a little bit out of a line like that. But they're not going to run out of line because the whole frame is designed to be flat. So if I get a quarter of an inch movement up there, does that mean to say that I've got a quarter of an inch error in my rail down there? No, it doesn't. Look. I'm going to do this and I'm going to show you what happens to that red dot. I picked it up in the air by half an inch. Has it moved? No. Let's go the other way. It's as solid as a rock. Why could that fourth corner be out of position? I can make it move. First of all, I can do this. What am I doing? Well, here's what I'm doing. I'm putting load on the cable chain like this. So when I lift it up like that, the whole beam goes down. When I push it down, not much happens, but a little bit of upward movement, but mainly it's when I lift it up, I get huge downward movement. Okay, that's one of the reasons why I loosened my cable chain off, because it was having an effect on the bracket. The bracket itself is pretty, um, what can I say, weak. I'm just going to very gently lift and lower, just put a small amount of load on that bracket there. Now if you watch carefully, you'll probably see several things moving. There'll be a little teeny weeny bit of movement here, but most of the movement is actually taking place flexing on this bracket here, on this 
Okay. Now, if I go in and I fiddle with the actual motor itself, the stepper motor, so here I'm going to adjust. I'm going to fiddle with the stepper motor now. I'm twisting the stepper motor. I'm physically pulling the stepper motor backwards and forwards towards me. Let's just have a look at what those things are doing to that red dot. Okay. First of all, just gentle movement on the actual plastic bracket itself. It requires very, very little angular motion on this mirror to cause a big distortion over here. This is the root cause of the fourth corner problem. Nothing to do with flatness or alignment of your machine or misalignment of the rails normally. It's all to do with something that is causing this mirror bracket to move during motion. Now, just in case somebody thinks that I'm using the wrong corner of the machine to jack it up, let's go the opposite way and look, I'm going to raise this corner of the machine by what, half an inch or more and we'll see what it does to my dot. Here we go, we're lifting the corner of the machine up. See any change? None at all. So, levelling the machine is not the answer to this question. Bear in mind what I've just said earlier on. This is my best shot that I've ever had at getting a beam to line up with the laser beam. And it still doesn't. There we go. So, we'll just set our red dot on there. So, it's not perfect, but it's there where you can see it now. Now I try and track it as we move from back corner to front corner and you can see what change is happening. Now in the middle of the stroke just here it's around about, I don't know, five, half past five, six o'clock time. And yet when we get to the front It's sitting up here at 11 o'clock, so it's quite a, quite a large change. The red LED beam indicates that something is not, not right here. So let's just take the beam off for a minute. And we'll put a new target on. Okay, so here we are in the back corner now. Let's see what we get. Virtually the same. So we don't have an error. What about in the middle? Nothing as much as the red laser diode was indicating. This machine is not as bad as we thought. It's about the same as it was before I started fiddling with it. But the whole point of this exercise is to show you that you cannot actually trust a red LED laser beam. There's only one thing that you can trust and that is the laser beam itself. The reason I'm sort of investigating this fourth corner problem is because at the same time I'm getting quite a few inquiries about can I use a camera or maybe a red LED pointer backwards? So in principle there's no reason why you can't put an LED pointer in the bottom here Hopefully it's axially true, which is the other big issue that you're going to have, but if you can make it axially true, then you can make it fire up here at this mirror, and you can adjust this mirror to get it... Mm, and this is the problem, you haven't just got to get it onto the centre of there, you've got to go through the same procedure of taking it up close to here, setting it, moving it away, so you've got to set it onto what? You've got to have a target on there, the problem with the target is you've got to remember where you set it because there is no memory with a piece of red LED pointer. You can't aim at the centre of the mirror because the centre of the mirror might not be the right place. But hey, let's just assume that the centre of the mirror is the right place and that you can adjust this mirror so that it's on centre and then you pull this head away from here and you adjust these up so that you get coincidence between the mark that you think you knew where it was on the centre, and this red LED dot. 
Okay, so now you've got this mirror set relative to there, and you've now got to make this mirror here correct to aim back at mirror number one. Put a target of some sort on mirror number one and bring this close, take it away, and then try and copy the same dot onto mirror one by adjusting mirror two. A little bit more difficult because if you've got nothing there to look at and you don't have to be perfectly on center. But with this method, if you're using an absolute target, you've got to be on center because otherwise, how do you know where you are? Okay, so, so far, it's a maybe, a possibility. Fiddly, but a possibility. Dot set onto mirror one. What do you do? If you've set mirror one so that it's exactly in the center of your target, fine. How do we now relate mirror one target position to the beam? The only way that I can see of doing it is if you fire the laser at mirror one. Sounds simple, doesn't it? All you've got to do is jiggle your tube to get the beam aligned with the middle of your target. So here's my laser tube with the beam coming out of it. And here's the red dot line that comes from mirror two. And it comes into mirror two and hits mirror one right on the center line. Okay, now here's my tube. I don't know the angle of my tube. I'm grossly exaggerating it here. It's going to be approximately 45 degrees like that, but let's assume that it's, for the purpose of this exercise, to exaggerate and show you the problem I see, I can make the beam hit that center point with the, with the tube like that or I can make it hit that centre point with the tube like that. Any angle in between is going to hit the centre point of that target. The reflection that I'm going to get is not the one that I'm holding my left hand. The reflection that I'm going to get is that one. Which means it's going to miss mirror two and all my settings are going to be mm, runny brown stuff. So I cannot see in principle how setting the machine from the back to the tube is ever going to work. You must work from the tube to the lens. So really today has been all about, if you like, proving that I still can't get, even with my best shot, I can't get a red dot pointed to tell me the truth. And I've still got to set the machine by the scorch method. And I've got to set it from the back to the front and not from the front to the back, because there is a logical flaw in working backwards. And that is why I've designed that head to be adjustable. The fourth corner problem is not quite what people tell you. It's all to do with the mounting of this mirror. This is the thing, just slight distortion on here, is the thing that causes a big change in the position of your beam onto that mirror over in that corner. So you've got to look carefully at your machine and examine where the force is coming from that's causing that bracket to tip. Now, I still haven't completely fixed mine, even though I've got fixing screws here, which tie it all in supposedly to here, there is still a very small amount of something which is giving me a small amount of distortion. I'm not gonna to be too worried because on a machine of this size, it's not going to be any sort of big issue. It's certainly not going to affect my photo engraving. So, with that, thank you very much for your time and um, we'll catch up with you in the next session.